The first thing the early church really organized around was actually justice. During the first months of the first church, there had been this spontaneous outpouring of radical generosity as wealthy people sold their belongings and let the church leaders distribute the proceeds to the poor. We're told that no one among them had any need. But as different subgroups of people joined the church, it became difficult to make sure that all of them were covered. So, some spirit-filled administrators were appointed for that. The challenge, as it has ever been in the kingdom of God, was to reach and include everyone. But to include everyone in something always seems to require some extremity. To include the poor required the rich to abandon privilege. To join Gentile and Jew together required the overturning of a whole social order. To preach the grace of Jesus threatened religious tradition. At first, to the early Christians, I think the kingdom of God probably seemed like a party. Gradually, it became clear that the party was also a revolution, a very deep one. It wasn't like a worldly revolution, which is a battle over who gets to control what. It was a revolution about getting free from the world and free from judgment. And the systems of the world and the forces of religion always resist the kingdom of God. That hasn't changed much. The first martyr of the Jesus Revolution was a Greek-speaking, miracle-working administrator named Stephen. He was killed by religious authorities because he seemed to threaten the religious status quo. And his death begged the question, at what price freedom? What will it take for us to be free? And what will it take for us to spread the spiritual and practical freedom we have in the kingdom of God? Is it worth giving up our possessions in order to have no needs among us? Is it worth sacrificing our privileges to achieve love across all barriers? Is it worth dying to spread life? Those aren't convenient questions. Those are revolutionary questions.